Welcome back to Cedarburg. Today we're going to be talking about something a little different, and you've probably already heard about this, but that is developer mode or dev mode. Any of you have talked about dev mode, asked about dev mode, or just talked about detailing in cities too. Well, I've had a chance to take a small look at dev mode, and I think there's some opportunities here if you're interested in trying it, so I thought I would share some of those opportunities. But first, be sure to subscribe to the channel. Please like the video and be sure to leave a comment down below with any thoughts you have for future episodes in the Cedarburg series. And make sure to glance over at the community tab on the page so that you can be up to date with any news. And there is one piece of news to share and that is that I'm going to be taking part in the first Five Builders One City series for Cities 2. This is a series we've done in the past for Cities 1 and I'll be joining this first season in Cities 2 coming up very soon. So check the community tab for more information on that. There's some awesome creators attached to that as well. So for a moment, let's talk about what developer mode is while I'm placing down some zones to accommodate some of the demand we have. Developer mode in Cities 2 is going to give you access to a whole bunch of stuff. This is stuff that you can kind of understand is for the developer to use in the game. This gives you a list of things you can not only control, but you can also add to your city. Everything from props, surfaces to buildings, and plenty more. Additionally, you have certain controls over the simulation and some other things going on in the game, but I am going to lay out this disclaimer. This is not something you should use if you're concerned about breaking your save, which I'm incredibly concerned about, but that's why I'm only gonna be using it to a very specific extent. So if you decide to use it, use it at your own risk. But for me, I'm only gonna be doing a couple of things. I'm gonna change one simulation setting to try to reduce some overlap issues, but then after that, it's really about props, services, and buildings for me. I would highly advise against doing anything with sim spawning or animals. That may improve the stability of dev mode, but keep in mind by using developer mode, it could cause game crashes or corruption of save files. So I say all that to say, be careful, this is not for everyone, but if you're looking to try something different, maybe this is something you could dabble with, but it's gonna be something you have to be very careful with. But how do you turn on dev mode? Before you open up the game, you need to right click on the game in Steam. You'll then click on properties and you'll have to type in this text under launch options, which is hyphen developer mode with a capital M. I'll post more information about this into the description so you have a clear way of setting this up. Once you open up Cities 2 and then load into a save file or a new map, you can then hit the home button to access a lot of the ploppable items that you can put down in your city. You can also hit your tab key to open up a whole nother menu that controls a lot more about the gameplay functionality. This is something I'm largely going to avoid. That's primarily because I just haven't really explored this a ton, nor do I know what to give you advice on in terms of how to change the gameplay functionality to benefit you or your gameplay. So like I said, we'll be leaning more heavily on the home button menu. This gives us a search functionality, much like you'd have in Find It with CS1, just without the pictures and some very intuitive UI functionality. So one of my favorite things about developer mode is it shows the opportunity for something along the lines of Surface Painter. Surface Painter for CS1 was often very helpful because it filled in space that was otherwise left sort of untouched, especially between buildings or roads. In addition to Surface Painter, there were brush assets on the workshop that helped you fill in areas even further. So you had a lot of this sort of functionality in a couple of different ways, but with surfaces in CS2, they operate a little bit differently. Every building seems to have some surface area around it. As you can see, I'm adjusting the surface of those buildings and they sort of operate where there's a point or a node on every corner and you can adjust the placement of that node. Additionally, you can set up your own surface area by clicking or choosing one of the surfaces and then placing a square or some sort of shape that fills in the area. You can remove it by right clicking on those corner nodes and it'll disappear. This works just like specialized industry and the work areas that you draw out. So again, there's two parts here. You can extend areas that already exist specific to buildings and the surfaces underneath them, or you can create your own surface area. And you can see we have a list on the right of those surfaces that we can apply. I haven't explored all of these, but the basics of like pavement and grass are pretty self-explanatory. So what can you use these for? A lot of times in Cities 1 and Cities 2, I spent a lot of time sort of just filling up areas that the buildings didn't cover to create a little bit of cohesion. That's something we talked about in our last episode when I was building this little space as well, is that I just didn't have a way to fill up some of the dead space that I couldn't fill through zoning or plopping a building. I want to be able to extend some sidewalks or make some adjustments with the pavement so that it didn't feel like the area was just missing something like there was just dead space or negative space not filled and now we can actually go in and make those adjustments utilizing this tool 
Now there is one adjustment I need to make utilizing the tab menu, and that is under simulation and it is bypass validation results. This is in an effort to help reduce some of the overlap I'm seeing when I'm trying to play some of these surfaces. And again, my disclaimer still stands, use all of this at your own risk. So the idea here is I wanna add some grass around this parking lot, but obviously we have this weird overlap where the parking lot extends because the path is next to it. I'm gonna get rid of that so it trims it back a little bit and try to fix this area that we actually worked on in the last episode to make it just look a little bit better. With the add object menu or what you find with the home button, I can go ahead and I can place and fill grass in some of these spaces. Now, while it doesn't have snow on it, I do think it helps kind of clean up some of these areas and makes it seem a little more purposeful. And if you get creative with pathing, you can also start building your own parks to fit awkward spaces that otherwise the parks you have in game now just don't fit. Obviously with this menu, you can also place trees and props. So while you can place trees using this menu, I very much recommend just using what you have in the base game of cities. But if you wanna close this menu, be sure not to actually hit the X button. Just click home. If you click the X button, you'll have to reload your save to be able to get it to come up again. Now for other props, you're just going to need to use things like keywords like benches or bins, and that'll allow you to get some props and place them. It does seem like there are a lot of different assets available in cities to base games. So there's gonna be some things you could lean on to give life to certain areas of your city. The only issue with this menu is it's obviously not very intuitive. You don't see images of everything. So you're kind of clicking until you start to come up with a little bit of a memory of what is what. And then you can probably move a bit faster. But right now the process is slow. So I'm using these tools somewhat sparingly. However, I think with surfaces, this is probably where I'm going to use the dev tool the most. It's just cleaning up different pockets of the city, expanding some surface areas just to make things look a little bit more polished and not so isolated from each other. So I've had multiple folks talk about needing Surface Painter or something like that in the game now so that they can make areas look a little better. And I think this is a possibility for you guys, again, with some discretion and making sure that you have some extra saves and you don't push it too far. This will also help with funky shaped areas, blocks like the one we're working with. But when you have those weird angles and you just can't really do much with it in base game, maybe you have enough flexibility with something like surfaces to, you know, fix some of those spots and create something a little bit more interesting or that fills the space more appropriately based on the vision that you're trying to create. And that's really how I've been looking at it. It's like these little pockets of areas and things where I just need a little bit extra concrete or grass just to fill in a space. Maybe I'm creating my own park-like area with some pathing in it, uh, maybe between buildings, because sometimes you know the buildings as you're zoning don't always fill up the block the way you want. So I can go in and add a little bit of pathing, some grass, and make it seem like a park in the inside of a block. And that's really how I would suggest using this tool. Let's talk a little bit about placing or plopping down buildings. This is not gonna fix every issue that you have with the zones, breaking of zones or anything like that, but it can give you some flexibility in being able to more specifically choose what buildings you wanna place where. So I've searched for row and I've found the North American row homes. Now there's an important tip when you're doing something like this. Obviously, if you place something like a growable building that is level one or level two, at some point those buildings are gonna to want to transition to a different level, so three, four, five. So it's best to probably place buildings that are level five. That way they're not gonna change later, if, especially if you're designing something very specific. So I'm gonna go ahead and place the same row home in a strip here, and this is going to be right next to our highway. Now you can see all the buildings are laid out as they should be. However, you still have to place a zone beneath them so they don't go abandoned. Since we don't have some sort of mod like plop the growables or whatever to give us the ability just to place buildings freely, Without zones, you are still going to have to zone beneath them. Again, it's not the perfect fix for every situation. It may help you with areas where you're trying to get zones to actually fill, you know, and you're sitting there waiting. And again, some of the game balancing seems a little bit odd. So you might be waiting a little bit longer than one might want. And then you can go ahead and fill in that area. Like we have our cemetery in the middle of town and I've been waiting on townhomes for a while to start filling that space. And when I'm doing cinematics and creating some of the video content that I'm making, I want those areas to feel full and not just empty. So theoretically, this is something that I could lean on to fix some of those spaces, right? Where I just, okay, I'm over waiting for someone to actually just move in or I'm waiting for the demand to show up. I'm done with it. Let's go ahead and get some buildings in and shape this area. Additionally, it's going to give you the ability to sort of customize the building type that you want. So even if you're using level five buildings, you still have the option of picking the depth of the building and in some cases, the width of the building to fit certain spaces better. 
And of course, when you start combining different elements of things that you have as options in the dev mode, you can start to make cool little spaces. So we can actually use the tile surface to create a little bit of a pavement area and build our own park utilizing just a few props. So I'm curious to know, have any of you tried this or any of you thinking about trying it? Again, I think I've put as many disclaimers as I can about kind of the security and, and issues that you may have with your saves or with your gameplay, given that this is not something we're all supposed to be using. And I hope that some of the features that we're seeing in here are a little bit of a preview of what modders can utilize or what we should expect when mods are in place for the game. I can see opportunities where the surface tool and being able to just drag those little nodes around can be really helpful. I would say the only area where it may have some issues is some overlaps, like for example, putting grass over pavement. Sometimes you see a little bit of a green tint to the pavement. So maybe there's like some prioritization of which is on top. Um, also, when you're doing curved uh, lines, like how do you do that without doing a ton of nodes? I mean, I guess that's kind of the answer to that question is like, you're just gonna have to do a ton of nodes, but it would be great to see the ability to kind of curve the edges or the segment on the edges. Now, obviously none of these tools are just perfect. In fact, there is an issue here that you're witnessing that you may or may not notice because I didn't notice when I was placing it down, but all these segments of fences are actually different colors. So there may be some areas where you can pick specific things like a specific fence or whatever, there may also be some randomization to what you're selecting. So you'll have to keep that in mind if you want to create continuity. And again, these tools are not meant to be perfect. They're not really meant for us to use. I don't know if there's a better way of selecting some of this. Maybe there's an option that I'm not aware of that'll require a little bit more research. But I think for those of you that are wanting to be really, really careful and precise with this, that just want a little bit of an extra feature, this may be something helpful for you or something to look forward to. I think I'm only really scratching the surface of what you're able to do. Uh, there's obviously some more options in terms of props and tools and things like that that probably exist and I'm really not playing with a lot of the other tools on the tab menu, but hopefully you can find a few things that you can do safely utilizing the home menu and creating just again some little spaces or some areas that are isolated or helping to blend certain areas together. Now obviously we've made a bunch of progress in Cedarburg and we won't be making as much you know standard progress during this episode because I'm showing you dev mode, but I would say that I think overall, we've done pretty well at giving this city a pretty good foundation. And I think over the next several episodes, we'll be focused on a few different things. One will be specialized industry. That is something that I need to get better incorporating into my builds in a way that I find, you know, useful that blend together, you know, relatively well. I could see some farms out in the distance or something like that might be nice. Not to mention, we're getting close to being able to add high density buildings and zoning to our city. So that's going to be something that I'm going to have to focus on as we continue to evolve the downtown area, as I've mentioned in pretty much every episode now. You know that we have a lot of low density uh, housing in the downtown area, which is probably going to change as we continue to grow the city and evolve it. And that is largely the focus of what we're doing in this city and with this build. And obviously in the comments down below, you can always let me know what kind of things you'd like to see videos on. Uh, if it's something like uh, around demand, that is something that I've talked a little bit about, maybe focusing on something where we discuss how to balance demand better, utilizing education and how to incentivize education. Some of you may already know this because I've talked about it a little bit in the past, but that's something I've been thinking about. I just don't have all the answers just yet. Um, and I don't know how like much content can even be in that video really, but I thought about doing that as a separate video from the Cedarburg series, just a little bit of like a short, you know, hey, these are things you need to keep in mind when building your city to help balance your demand. There's also a video I'd like to do that focuses a little bit on kind of a perspective thing of how to build your cities. Maybe something giving a little bit of an insight into how you can shape your cities better, zone them better, and create better looking cities um, as just a different type of build that you do that will give you, I think, a little bit more insight into how you set up your city because of where it goes later. Um, I don't really want to give too much away, but there is an idea for a video there, I think, but I just have to wrap my head around how to like put that information into a video. So one of the other big things I need to work on in Cedarburg is really trying to create more of a transition from the highway into the city. So we have our highway area as almost a boundary for downtown. But right now when you exit the highway, it just feels like it goes from very small, you know, houses and buildings to, you know, taller buildings when you get into the medium density area. And we need to create somewhat of a transition there. Obviously, some of our low density residential will begin to kind of disappear as we upgrade that into things like row homes or you know, medium density housing and other stuff. So I'm not too concerned about it right now. I don't want to go too overboard. However, we do need to create a little bit of an effect of like 
you know, a fade, a transition into some of the bigger buildings, especially with the high density on the way. So on some of the routes that lead from the highway or the other side of town into downtown, I'm gonna work to start controlling a little bit more of the zone size. So I'm gonna stop, you know, making uh, areas or zoning areas of six deep and maybe do four or three deep and try to more so control the scale of the building utilizing the zone selection. That way, theoretically, we get smaller buildings towards the highway and they will fade into the larger buildings we've started setting up downtown. Now, when we start transitioning some of these medium density buildings into high density, we'll have to do a lot to sort of control their placement and in some cases their size, because obviously as we're evolving the city, I don't want everything just to be the biggest building. I want, you know, transitions and I don't want it to be a skyscraper next to a low density house. Uh, so there's a lot to do here in terms of growing uh, the downtown of Cedarburg as we continue to progress through some of the milestones. What's interesting is I just unlocked the iron press building and that is essentially like a really good target for some of the size of the buildings that I want to actually create via zoning. And so far while playing Cities 2, I've leaned on mixed use uh, to really provide a lot of the transition pieces to creating um, fades and stuff like that in and out of downtown. I use them a lot for corner buildings because I tend to like how they come out. And then I found that their smaller versions of their buildings or you know, lower level buildings tend to look really good. So as you can see, the snow has faded away, at least for now. And uh, I'm going to try something again with dev mode since that needs to be our focus for today. Off camera, I went ahead and added a welfare building to help with the welfare of the Sims. I noticed that that can also obviously assist with homelessness. So I think it's good to have that in there relatively early. I went ahead and added a park maintenance building to our city as well. And that kind of reminded me, I need to add some parks to this place because uh, we really don't have very many, if at all. So we're gonna work on that. And I wanna show you kind of how I'm extending some of these grass areas to fill up spaces. Now, this is not always the perfect scenario. I do wish we could you know take away some of the fences there to make this into a bigger area or an open area but for now it'll help at least blend it in visually so by utilizing the surfaces i can make this whole area a nice little park and then you can actually go in and add pathing on top of this if you want to style your own park you can make it much larger to take up an odd space i just think being able to scale these differently and uh, go beyond the borders that are set by the game i think gives you a really fun opportunity to like change up some of the areas that you're designing and i'm going to show you one other way you can utilize these tools in the city that is really, really helpful for filling up some of your city blocks, sort of similar to how we're doing this. But as you can see, I can actually place pathing over this. Like I mentioned earlier, I just want to kind of proof a concept this. So if you do want to extend those surface areas and you want to put pathing over it, there you go. So one thing that tends to drive me a little bit crazy is when you have these areas and city blocks that you just don't know what to do with, right? So let's find a little bit of a remedy for this space here and how we can fill it up so that it looks, you know, nice and polished and finished more so than it does now. Because right now it just looks like an empty space between buildings that I couldn't zone or that the buildings that are growing in the zones just aren't going to fill up. So first, I would just want to pick some sort of pathing. Um, I'm going to utilize uh, pathing via surface versus trying to put our own pathing down. And the reason is, is this is not really an area I expect Sims to even walk on, but it would be nice to have something to give the look of a sidewalk. So the goal here is, is to basically create a park between the buildings. So by laying out some of these concrete paths, you see that we can create a little bit of something that looks similar to just sidewalks. And then there's gonna be a cool thing we can do with the grass to fill that in a little bit to make it stand out beyond just what the base texture like map grass is. So you can probably get an idea of, of different props you could add to this area. Now, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna try to clean up some of the edges of some of the buildings as well. And, make that kind of evened out some so it doesn't feel so you know back and forth with some of the lines now one could just leave the grass as is but i want it to stand out to be different so i'm going to actually add a grass texture where it looks like it's been maintained it's been mowed a couple times or mowed with a design i guess is the best way to put it and bam this area looks vastly different than it did all of a sudden and stands out from the rest of the map so while these tools may not be perfect for what you're going to try to do everywhere, it does give you something to work with if you're interested in taking this route. And as we zoom out, you can see how it stands out and it looks like a completed area. Now, if we go in and clean up the trees, obviously it's going to look even better, uh, especially not to have trees growing in the concrete. 
something I have to look out for though is because these buildings are probably level one or level two, they may not stay this way. They may upgrade over time. So I'm probably gonna have to go in and actually replace the buildings and make some tweaks to those surface areas. But you, at least you can get an idea of what this can look like. And that may be where placing buildings down using the dev tool could be helpful. Maybe you need to go ahead and get that level five building in so you don't have to worry about a building upgrading or changing over time. And then you don't have to stress so much about having to make updates later. For example, we have this building here, and I know that this is going to probably change a little bit later. So I'm going to go ahead and replace it, utilizing pretty much the same method we did earlier. Now, obviously, the zoning is already there, so I'm just going to place the building over the zone that's already created for the building. So I'm going to place a building that has a little more height to it and maybe fills up this space just a little bit better. Obviously, I need to watch how deep the building goes, but once we get it in place, you'll kind of see what you can maybe do to get some of these buildings to fill up whatever you're trying to zone a little bit more appropriately. And as I'm doing this, like I'm just so reminded of how nice it would be to have find it sort of integrated into cities too, and just set up where we could do this on the fly. There's so many beautiful assets in cities too, so much more variety in some ways that I just want to be able to access it. And I want to be able to see it in an intuitive way, right? While I know that we're relying pretty heavily on growable buildings and zoning for all of our cities, you know, we're all going to see city blocks like this where we just have that dead space in the middle. So similar to what we did in the last city block, I'm going to create, you know, some pedestrian paths through here utilizing uh, the dev tools and then add some grass in. And that should make this area stand out a little bit better uh, and seem more complete. I wanted to share this because I again, I think this is a really solid example of how you can use the dev tools sort of minimally in your build and just do very specific things to give your city a better look or you know, finish up some areas. And I hope that this is something that you guys find interesting uh, because I think this is something that hopefully gives us some insight into maybe how some of the tools look later on. Um, I know that's been a conversation in some regard is like maybe, you know, the way that these surfaces work is sort of the surface painter will get in the future. Um, I hope or I wish that pedestrian paths could be done this way as well uh, to clean up some of the edges. Although again, we'd have to find some way of doing curved lines or something like that. Um, a little bit more smoothly. You know, I have to stress though that obviously this is not the perfect way of doing any of this and it can cause issues. And if you do have issues, I'm not sure how to fix them. So make sure you add extra saves into whatever you're doing. I think so far since I've started using the dev tools, I've had one crash, uh, but I can't say that that was specific to dev tools being on. It seemed like the game just decided to crash. It was just a Unity crash, um, but Obviously, I don't know, that's not really my my specialty, but I just want to make sure that you guys are very aware that this is imperfect, but you know, maybe it gives you something to do until we get some of the workshop assets and mods that we're also excited for, because I know that based on how I played Cities 1, that is something I'm looking forward to that I hoped would be integrated, obviously, a little bit sooner. And now I have something that I can at least lean on to maybe polish up some areas. I don't think I'm gonna be using this a ton. It's just gonna be something I have in the background to fix an area here and there. And um, that'll be the sort of goal or, or what I lean on uh, on occasion until we get those mods that we're waiting on. So I hope you enjoyed the video. I hope this was helpful. If you are considering trying this or if you just wanted to see some ideas for how this can be used in your game. So be sure to hit the subscribe button. Please like the video and drop a comment down below as to whether you're going to use the dev tools in one of your builds. And I will see you all next time.